a flag, an amulet, an illustration from a manuscript, a burial jar, a piece of bone. More than just objects in a museum or a history book, these speak to us today perhaps more urgently than in times of their creation. In this season, Dayao explores the objects and manuscripts that form a puzzle. One that challenges our own conceptions of who we are and what our purpose as a nation is. All are vital clues in our continuing search for our knowledge, our pride. In the opening of the 2019 Southeast Asian Games, many wondered about the eye-catching patterns that were used as projected backdrop for the production. Intricate, colorful, bold, and very modern designs, all which were taken from actual examples of indigenous Filipino textiles. The use of these designs was just another instance of a newfound awareness that has slowly but surely become manifest in our consciousness. In fashion, lifestyle, and the creative industries, our indigenous weaves have become not just a source of inspiration, but symbols in our continuing quest for identity. We continue to explore symbols of our nationhood, this time through the rich heritage of weaving and the abundant harvest of designs, techniques, meanings, which many Filipinos are only now beginning to discover. More than just artifacts in collections or sources of inspiration to enliven contemporary creativity, these textiles and their creators make up a multicolored banner, a flag, if you will, that is representative of the people. The tradition of weaving on a backstrap loom is an ancient one in Southeast Asia. The fragment known as a banton cloth is the earliest known abaca warp ika textile in the whole of Southeast Asia. Dated to circa 12th century, a deaf shroud used to wrap the body, the whole textile would have been composed of red, black, and white abaca threads. What does this fragment say about weaving in the Philippines? Norma Respicio is considered a foremost expert on Philippine textiles. Her book, The Journey of a Thousand Shuttles, documents the various weaving techniques as well as the looms that were used to produce these textiles. The older and more widespread of these looms is a backstrap loom which is still widely used today to create masterpieces. The weaver is an integral part of the loom, for her body serves as a source of tension and pressure to keep the threads of warp and weft together. 
The backstrap loom is uh, made up of uh, actually three important parts. No? There are two beams, no? wooden beams. One is placed uh, close to the womb no? of the weaver. No? That one is split longitudinally such, and uh, it holds and rolls the woven uh, cloth. While the other one is uh, placed uh, a little higher than uh, this one here close to the weaver. That upper, upper beam uh, holds no, the uh, raw warp uh, yarns. No? One characteristic of backstrap weaving is that to open and close the warp, it's the torso of the weaver that moves. When, uh, when the torso of the weaver moves forward, nalu loosen up yung warp. So it's easier for the heddles to be raised and for the weaver to insert the beater. It's actually the opening and the loosening and then tightening of the warp through the body of the weaver. Backstrap was all over the Philippines, not just uh, in uh, groups like uh, upland groups like uh, Cordillera, but uh, also in uh, uh, areas like in the Visayas, no? and even up to now uh, in Mindanao. No? To understand the backstrap looms enduring relevance to our indigenous weavers, we need only to look at the recipients of the Gawad Manlilika Nambayan. Since its inception in 1992, the Gamaba distinction has been bestowed upon five weavers from Mindanao, all who still use the backstrap loom. Langdulay ay Tiboli and Salintamonon ay Bagobo are two master weavers who have passed on but their bodies of work are now part of our national heritage. They uh, are really uh, dedicated uh, textile weavers. No? And um, they never use commercial dye, they only use natural dye. No? For uh, Langdulay, for example, she is really the master of uh, uh, designing. No? She can come up with designs that are so intricate, just like the Phoenix design, in so stylized form. And yet, you would see and feel the form of the Phoenix in her, in her uh, abaca ikat. No? At the same time, her, the smoothness of the uh, abaca ikat production, even uh, Salinta Monon, are so smooth, no? Very smooth surface, well-defined uh, design forms, no? And uh, shiny and pliant. Asalin Tamanon is a Basaybagobo from Davao del Sur. Again, just like uh, just like Lang Dulay, she was able to preserve the identity of the Bagobo of Davao del Sur through her very intricate and very colorful weaves. What I do remember about Langdulay, the legendary Langdulay, is the fact that she had not only uh, weaving virtuosity, but she was also a leader. She was a leader. Her school was a big school and she had many followers and she was able to train many of them. The most recent set of Gamaba awardees announced in 2018 included yet another weaver of Abaca Ika. She is a Balaan from Polomolok, South Cotabato. Yay! Bada, yay bada. Ang nauna niyang ano, yung sinabi niyang mama niya na mag-design daw siya ng kung tawagin ay fanggalaw. Fanggalaw daw yung pinagawa sa kanya para makuha niya lahat ng designs. Masaya daw siya ma'am pag nagwi-weave dahil nagwi-weave siya na mula sa puso. The traditional weaving uh, similar to the tinalak in, in, in uh, the way of uh, working, but this is ikat, no? Ikat weaving. And you know that uh, 
um, ikat weaving is very old in the Philippines. And um, we have fewer and fewer ikat weavers simply because it's a very hard uh, kind of uh, work. You have to be so painstaking in your work because you really have to tie a lot you know, of strings in order to create, to create the pattern. And um, Puyabing, in spite of her age, in spite of her eyesight not as clear anymore as before, she continues, she persists in this. And she very she creates very, very fine designs. To imagine that these master weavers just sit at their looms and weave is a simplistic view of their art. For abaca ikat weaving is a process that begins with a knowledge of the natural world. From the gathering of the abaca leaves, stripping of its fibers, laying of the threads to the frames, to the composition of the design by tying specific portions so that they will be untouched by dyes and gathering the roots, herb and bark, the ingredients for the natural dyes. The very process of weaving is not possible without all this knowledge and preparation. The forest and its plants, the rivers and mountains, the seasons, all of these are the weaver's partners. The environment is indeed the co-creator of the weaver's masterpieces. The backstrap loom has also been used to create textiles from cotton and even silk. Darhata Sawabi, a Tausug and 2004 Gamaba, worked in both silk and cotton. The Gamaba distinction recognized her as a master weaver of the Pishyabit a textile that best represents the glory of indigenous weave. Her early demise was an irreplaceable loss to the nation. Darhata Sawabi was a master of this piece of Yabit. He really marveled at the intricacy of the design, very finely detailed, um, very colorful. We're hoping that we will find somebody who is as good as her, but we, because we know that she was not the only one uh, in her a town or in her province to really practice this tradition and that Hata Sawabi's legacy should really continue. The Yakan of Basilan are renowned for their complex weaves and their vibrant use of color. The latest batch of Gamaba awardees included one master weaver, still adept at weaving the Sineluan and Seputangan, the two signature textiles of her people. That the really the duty of the Manilikan Bayan to make sure that uh, she or he transfers this skill to the younger people in, in the community. The backstrap loom is equally widespread in the Cordilleras, as is the tradition of ikat weaving. One of the most iconic ikat textiles was created by the Isinai, 
as a prestige textile meant for trade. It's one of the most valuable uh, trade goods in the past. It is equivalent, like I said, to six carabaos. It was 29 pesos in 1908 because of the tedious process that goes with it, the natural dye, the backstrap loom weaving, and then uh, the coloring of the blanket. So it has traveled to different places. And then um, it is used as a burial cloth uh, for the elite uh, groups in Mountain Province, in Ifugao. But it is also a status marker for the living. You know? So whoever has that blanket uh, belongs to that affluent society in um, that particular society. But as it traveled to the different cultural communities of the Cordilleras, it acquired new values and new meanings. The other loom that is widely used is the foot pedal loom or box type loom. This loom is composed of a sturdy wooden frame with three foot pedals, horizontal beams to support the warp, and an even longer lengthwise frame to keep the threads in place. So instead of the body of the weaver um, going forward and backwards to open and close the warp sheds, it would be the treadles or the pedals that would, uh, by by pushing them up, down and up and down, somehow there would be the opening and closing of the warp yarns. No? In 2012, the Gamaba distinction was awarded to a weaver from Pinili Ilocos Norte, Magdalena Gamayo. But I think as early as 16, uh, when we already learned uh, the art of weaving, um, the Abel, the Ilocano Abel. Abel is a uh, kind of term for hobby, no? And um, she has a very, very vast repertoire of Abel weaving, especially the binacle pattern. She knows many, many other patterns. Some of them are very difficult to make. Magdalena Gamayo, in spite of her age, can continue uh, doing all those important, very important designs. The popularity of the backstrap loom is evident in many other weaving centers across the archipelago. In Antique, communities of weavers continue to produce the checkered, multi-purpose textile called patanjo. It seems most apt that piña is called the queen of Philippine textiles. The sheerness and transparency of the finished textile, the way the fabric lends itself to embroidery and different techniques of ornamentation, the social prestige that is associated with it, as well as the personal memories we make when we wear it to the most important occasions. All these have earned Piña the title. Galleries and museums are now devoted to textiles. Through my vision and support, our own National Museum has taken the lead with its permanent textile gallery, the Higla ng Lahing Filipino, Traditional Philippine Textile Gallery. Outside the country, 
the National Museum of the Philippines, in partnership with my office and support from the Department of Foreign Affairs, has launched Hiblanang Lahing Filipino Traveling Exhibition and Lecture Series, featuring textiles made of piña seda in London, Lisbon, Madrid, Frankfurt, Washington, D.C., New York, San Francisco, Hawaii, Tokyo, Bangkok, Singapore, Geneva, and Buenos Aires. The Ayala Museum has also devoted a gallery to the collection acquired by Mercedes Zobel. Specialized shows have been mounted by the Yuchenko Museum on the textile traditions of Mindanao. The Museo Cordillera in the University of the Philippines in Baguio has a comprehensive show on the indigenous technology that has fueled the weaving tradition of the Cordillera peoples. What we do is to study uh, traditional designs, traditional textiles. We do research in historical uh, archives in the U.S., in the Philippines, and also from local communities. We look at them, we scan them, and count technically the, the number of uh, threads that goes in there. No? So microscopically, we, we, we do the tests. And we have a universal testing machine that would look into the strength of the textiles, even uh, the waterproof characteristics of the textiles, and other technical characterizations that are evident in the old textiles. And then, uh, without sacrificing the original or the identity of the textiles, in order to help improve uh, and help the weavers in uh, weaving and reviving the craft. The numerous museum exhibits help preserve the knowledge while showcasing the best of old examples. But it is the work of designers and those from the creative industries that most captures the public imagination. Their work helps in both informing the public as well as shining a spotlight on the traditional weaver and artisan. I will be the first to say that this episode is far from complete or comprehensive. There is just so much to learn about our weaving traditions to be contained in one episode. And Daya was done many, many such episodes. Why should our weaving tradition be so important to us? Think of this. Here is a tradition that has survived to this day, providing a viable source of income for many while preserving ancient techniques. It is an indigenous art form that integrates spirituality, ecology, and botany with precise mathematics and technology. Taken collectively, here are meaningful symbols of a nation. The diversity of Philippine indigenous textiles mirrors our own. Behind every textile is a story of weavers. This is Lauren Legarda, proud to bring to you the stories of Filipinos who embody Dayao, our knowledge, our pride.